uh, good luck. So this is called, um, uh, this is called, uh, Bishop, no, Bishop gained handicap. So I'm going to continue playing my usual opening stuff here. Um, or I typically open with the center foul pawn, bring the rook over, that sort of thing. This is an unrated game. This is not for a tournament. This is not anything like that. Um, so we're still going to make the best use we can of our pieces. I am more than a bit nervous of embarrassing myself here, but I mean, we'll play the best we can. Oh, I usually don't play static rook. That's the thing. Um, this is so weird. So yeah, playing my center fell pawn is not going to profit me here in any way. Um, <laughs> this is so, so weird. I guess... I'm not even sure why I pushed my center fell pawn. We're going to push this then. Um, and play third foul rook. Despite having pushed my center foul pawn and this being super awkward, there's no reason for me to push this again. Um, uh, and the embarrassment starts already. That's okay. So, yeah, Wikipedia said about this, that the merit of the this kind of handicap is it trains a player to look for bishop drops um, that might not ordinarily look for such. So, I, yeah, certainly there's instructive value to it. Um, but my goodness, like, he's going to spot every possible bishop drop. I'm going to need to find some sort of combination in order for a bishop drop to be valuable. Um, He's not just going to give me some accidental bishop drop somewhere. Like, that's not happening against uh, 2200. So, um... Tuck the king in a little bit more. I'm debating do I want to Mino or Anaguma this? The, playing Anaguma seems like that's something I would never do in a tournament situation. Um, let's not do it here. Um, so let's prepare this in case like rooks get exchanged and something happens. So I know like this is not the handicap Joseki. I fully get that, but also I'm wanting to see, can I play a normal-ish game despite this weird material circumstance and still play okay? Um, So, uh, yeah, what do we do now? Uh, I'm more or less ignoring the fact that we have this odd handicap. Um, I'm just trying to play a normal game, but... Bishop in hand is huge for Shogi.
I'm gonna regret that uh, this gold move later. For now, it's okay, but uh, it's gonna lead to a tense position. <laughs> Just drop it next to the rook to show your dominance. I mean, here I could fork the rook and the gold. Would that be any good? I No, of course not. But um, it's not nothing, but it's not what we're aiming for. Hmm. Interesting. My silver here is just so lonely. It wants part of this action. I'm super pensive because, like, I'm setting up tactics already against my position, but what else am I going to do? Maybe this isn't bad.
Sorry for the lack of commentary. I just don't know what to say. Other than almost anything I can say is probably wrong. Everything I'd normally be afraid about where a bishop invades my position is not happening right now. So, thank goodness for small miracles. This feels wrong, but I'm just not finding any ideas here, so we're going to play this. It's better to have a plan than no plan. Even if it's a bad plan. I am so confused by this move. I mean, he sees what I see. We know that much. We could be absolutely certain he sees that what I'm threatening. My question is, what does he do about it? Okay. It still feels like a huge achievement. Perhaps it's misguided, but it feels like an achievement. Okay, so now he gets that earlier idea about allowing him to advance this. 
Interesting. Oh, uh, I've made my task more difficult. Okay, what do we do now? Let's avoid some sort of discovery happening on the second rank and maybe encourage the king to step toward the knight. If the king defends the knight, I might get an initiative if stuff gets exchanged. If this, um, well, depends where his pieces are located. Um, also, this bishop's not active. Um, Perhaps I should have put a pawn down before doing all this. But we're virtually in Biomi. Um, I'll need more time for my next move than for this one. All right, what do we do? Oh, that's illegal. All right. Good game. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, it was a matter of time. Yeah. So, like, obviously I panic a lot. Oh, I should write stuff. Uh... <laughs> Not really sure what I'm attacking when I'm attacking stuff. Um, like, yeah, eventually I did find some way to get a gold, and like there I could have started some kind of an attack from that, but um, I don't know. Yeah. So like I mentioned at the outset, like, very high chance of me embarrassing myself. Well, we just saw that happen. Um, not the way I expected, but um, time pressure makes fools of us all in different ways. But um, yeah, it's not easy. I still have 
uh, pieces to contend with. I think I did reasonably okay for, like, an amateur who's... Uh, I don't know. I did okay. But, like, there's just such an immense gap. Oh, nice. Uh, uh, thanks. Uh, glad I found some ideas this game. But it's just, like, the rating gap here is so enormous that I don't understand the point of the exercise. That's, that's what has me confused. Like, from move one, it's a winning advantage, not for any amateur, but, like, engine against engine. Uh, top-level player against top-level player, that's a decisive advantage. Uh, I get that, like, material handicaps of, are part of how we teach Shogi. But I don't understand, because I'm not on the other end of it. I don't see, like, how this... Um, helps teach the player like what they're supposed to be looking for. I did find these ideas on the fourth file. Those are interesting. <laughs> oh no. Uh the Llama Lord, uh last month OBS pushed out um an update. So if you download the newest OBS and you turn on experimental closed captioning you will get closed captions, which I thought is a fantastic, wonderful accessibility feature. And the minute they released it, I downloaded the new OBS. Like, it's not perfect. There's a lot of room for the automated closed captioning to grow. But absolutely, every streamer should be using this. That's my suggestion, because I believe in accessibility. I believe in helping those people who most need help. So, again, there's a lot of room for it to grow, but um, I think it's still definitely a good idea for me to... Um... Oh, interesting. Okay. That makes sense here. This keeps things flexible. I like the shape. It's beautiful. I was mentioning pushing the third foul pawn and being... I was really anxious about pushing this because, like, in general, I get wrecked when I start pushing stuff near my king. But also, in general, I get wrecked every time in the opening against everyone, no matter what I'm doing. So... Um... I, there's only so much that fear can help guide what I'm doing. <laughs> uh, yes, the Llama Lord, I did hear about that. I have opinions about it. They mentioned the official reason was that they couldn't moderate the captions and people were just using it to submit ads. And I kind of get that, but it's still really disappointing. Like, uh, Google sure knows how to kill features. They develop so many, but the ones that are the most interesting to me, they end up killing all the time, and I'm kind of mad about it. Um, anyway, so yeah, this... Um, so we got three pawns, and then we get this, and like, what's the meaning of this? I don't get it at all. Um, oh, this bishop finally springs to life on the other diagonal. Oh! This, um, okay. It's something. It's a flexible way to move the pieces. Reminds me, like, when you see chess experts and masters playing, somehow their pieces just magically land on all the right squares. Because um, they have the experience. They know where the pieces go. They know, like, when there's tension and when there's not tension. So, like, here, yeah. Just stick all the pawns on the sixth rank, 
and just continue expanding the castle gradually. Because um, I've dealt with the Ibisha, the static rook is blocked, and he can't force open any of the other files without some sort of pawn tension, like now like what we see here. And really the knight here is the piece that scares me the most, because it's the one that can change where I put my pieces. But, um, yeah, this is a good place for my rook. <sighs> so I tried to play this kind of like a normal game, just ignoring the fact that he doesn't have a bishop. Um, so I can try to play uh, something that might look familiar. Sacrifice the knight to try... Oh! Uh, that didn't even occur to me that that forces a rook, or tries to force a rook trade. Yeah, since my pawn is so far advanced on the 7th file that like I can try this. And it's hard for, um, well, the further their pawns advance, the more room there is for a bishop to maybe drop. So, yeah, I could see why I don't need to be so afraid here. It's interesting. Like, we see all that space on their half of the board, but they're constantly having to deal with a bishop drop threat. Um... Ah. Uh. Yeah. I just don't know like what to say or what to ask or anything. Like this is this is new experience for me. I'm just kind of basking in it. I'm trying to absorb, like, what the hell is going on. Um, it's... So, yeah, I saw that. Oh, okay. No, you're right. I misread this. Um, but, <laughs> like, on the third move of the variation, I misread this. But, um, yeah, wow. That is interesting. Yeah, somehow I thought, oh, my silver's trapped. I better give up. Um, even having looked at, like, the idea of putting a pawn there. But I misread the whole thing. Promoting the pawn, getting this, um, would have been valuable. Oh, wow. Okay, well, I plainly missed a lot of stuff here. Oh, this? Okay. This is another way to activate a rook. <laughs> Interesting. Um... Yeah, so you can't take that. Uh... Yeah, makes sense. Usually there would be some devastating counterattack if you just, like, give an opponent a free move like this. And they're threatening to, like, try to open up their rook and promote it. But here, um, yeah, there's just, he has no way to, like, tear apart my position. 
Yeah, and then this promotes, and then um, yeah. Oh well, okay. Yeah, he gets a counter attack after all. It's just my attack is pretty strong, but no, there is a counter attack. Because he's able to make use of the fourth file while my rook's over in the second file. My rook can't be on two files at once. Yeah. Yeah, the material imbalance is just so severe. Yeah. This is true. That if I were able to solve this problem of using my major pieces effectively, and bear in mind, that doesn't mean just move out the rook and move out the bishop. It means use all the pieces effectively. Um, yeah. Uh, pieces regularly. Uh, it's just so hard. Shogi's complex. I think we knew this, but um, it's not just a matter of just bring the rook out and play like side pawn picker or bring the bishop out or do bishop exchange. It's a matter of find a harmony for all the pieces and use them all effectively. Um, and yeah, where it's most obvious is when I have a rook or a bishop that like, those are my most powerful pieces. If they're not pulling their weight, the game is going to suffer. Um, but so it's like where it's most obvious that I have problems. And yeah, I'm really not sure, like, what to do about that, because the rook and the bishop can't conduct an attack on their own. You really need the entire army to do something need to find the weaknesses and approach the king and, you know, make progress. If Shogi were easy, people wouldn't play it. Yeah, welcome back. I just always find it so surprising when um, opponents' attacks don't crush me. And so I take on this skeptical role where, oh, well, nothing's ever going to work against me. And then there's things that like make me pause and think, well, what am I going to do about their attack? And most of the time I try to just ignore it, and it doesn't go away, and I just lose. Um, Yeah, so. Oh, but now Senta has a pawn in hand, and that knight is fixed in place, but still. Yeah, right. Yeah. It's about to suggest this. But the problem is uh, I need to play the 20 moves before this position to uh, have this opportunity. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I can find this. Like, give me this position. I can find, like, the last move of the combination. It's finding all the other moves before this that's so freaking hard. That's... Shogi's complicated. <laughs> yeah, and even here, Lily's pointing out, oh, it's not quite so simple. There's still stuff to consider. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't expect a king to quite work in the middle of the board with this kind of buildup, like, especially with the huge material deficit. How in the world? But apparently it's a thing. Apparently this can be survived. It's just amazing what resources exist in this game. Um, I mean, the fact that he's surviving with the king in the center, despite, like, everything going on here, just indicates, like, I've played something defensive, and maybe I need to play something more aggressive, I guess. I don't know. Well, I did try playing some aggressive moves this game, and it just backfired. Uh, all moves at the openings are very important. Yeah. Like we saw in Shimon's game yesterday, uh, he had familiarized himself with the Joseki and played a very convincing opening attack. Um, let's see. Attacking moves. Play after the opening was more convincing until I missed a five move sume. Um, hmm. Got a text message, probably some other spammer telling me to go vote or something. That's a spammer. Yes, I'm not sure what to make of this game. It has me very confused. Like, it's a good creative exercise, but I also don't... Like, there's such... A tremendous rating disparity and, and disparity in experience like I get that this is a large material advantage but I'm just confused by the exercise if I were a stronger player maybe I'd get it I'm trying but like there's just a lot to learn I'll get from handicap is how I can support my general pieces I'm playing offensively with the bishop and the rook. Okay. Um. Yeah, 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 that makes sense. Okay, so... Uh, uh, in many games I play 
quite defensively. And suddenly switch to playing aggressively. Like, it's true, I just kind of sit there, play these defensive formations, get fed up with it, and then start attacking. Um, and I guess the point of this exercise is I'm supposed to, like, flex, flex some offensive muscle. Okay, we got another spam message. What does it say this time? Same number that I just blocked is not actually blocked. Great. Anyway, um... <clears throat> um, from here, best move. Um, well, I mean, that's it's gotta be like this drop, right? Um, oh, all right. Let me think. Um, let's see, is he threatening to block the file? Maybe this. I do like this idea of promoting the rook. Not bad. Um, hmm. Curious. Yeah, I don't know about that. So, like, this is threatened. So... Uh, I need to find something here. Like, I like pawn take, or token takes on 7-3 and I promote. Like, in a practical game, if I saw it, there's a very good chance I would play that. But there might be a better move. And this has me curious. Uh, has my curiosity. Hmm. Not sure. Not sure what it's supposed to be here. Like, I was convinced it was Token Takes Pawn, but, um... But, is there something better? We should find it. So retreating the token runs into gold, hitting the rook. That's just no good. Um, hmm. Is the, I mean, is the rook trapped? No. Yeah, I was looking at a silver drop on 7-2, but then he, like, drops a silver here. Hmm, maybe it's okay. Hmm, but if I move this, drop the silver into 2, there's the rook 6-2. 
and like well actually maybe that is better somehow maybe this and follow that by pawn token no okay okay um Hmm. Need my pieces to support each other. I want to improve the positioning of my worst place piece, but like. All of them seem to be reasonably well positioned here. Um, okay. Thanks. All right, cool. Okay, really? So, this is playable, not a bad choice, but he's saying that, like, if this gold were elsewhere, this would be a bigger problem. This is playable, not a bad choice, but still there's something better here. Yeah. Uh, you get some time. All right, so. Mm -hmm. Oh, this. Oh, that's interesting. So, like, what do we do about this then? confused um Uh, okay, I have to do this the hmm. Okay. Like, do I have an attack? The, like, this is kind of what I'm referring to. I'm just so confused. Um, yeah, right. Yeah, that's a fierce attack. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. <clears throat> I get confused when I get puzzles that aren't sume, because, like, almost other time I'm given a puzzle, it is a sume puzzle. And that's not to say that I'm any good at solving sume either. But, um, yeah, no, that makes sense. That, like, here my attack does continue. I have some invader that he can't really get rid of. Um, 
So that supports an attack that's just going to grow over time. So yeah, getting that foothold in the door is kind of important. Um... Interesting. What is this about? Oh! <laughs> wow. Yeah, I missed that. That is cool. This has to advance, and it does. Ah, jeez. <laughs> Jen is impressed. I see. I have other pieces. And I tend to forget about them. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Um, so in the opening, it's about using the big pieces. And every other position, it's about using all the pieces. Or, actually, the bishop is one of the big pieces. So yeah, it's important to use it effectively in here, because um, Gota only has pawns in hand. It's difficult for them to fight off an attack that's behind their pawn wall. Just new to me. Most opponents I play aren't forced to advance all their pawns. Like, the handicap giver is forced to do here. Yeah. I feel like there should be a book about promoted pawn attacks. Yeah. That's, that's pretty nice. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, Gian is impressed by that fork too, but we need to use the big pieces first. Ironically, winning material is not our biggest concern here. because we're able to build some kind of an initiative. Uh, yeah, once you're behind enemy lines and all the pieces are like in front of you, it's hard for them to kick you out. Yeah, this is much nicer. Oh, thanks, Jen. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see if I can keep it.
I think there's just going to be a lot of up and down and up and down. And I expected that to be my adventure for today. Instead, we are like playing a handicap game. Um, so that's a different kind of an adventure. Uh, yeah, I don't know like what else to suggest or ask or whatever here. Uh, maybe I should look uh, problems about how to promote bonds or pieces. Um, it seems I really struggle with that. One piece which can promote, and often that doesn't happen. Uh, yeah, promotion is really huge. In, well, it's important in quite a few positions. Players will sacrifice pieces in order to promote and start attacking a king. You don't really see the same thing in chess. Uh, sometimes you will see just these outstanding combinations where a pawn does promote. I think I've had one tournament game in my many years of tournament play where actually promotion was the key idea and just completely sealed the fate of the game. But it's, yeah. In Shogi, it seems like there are so many positions where promotion just suddenly changes the character of the game. Remember something from One Eye's stream. Oh. Okay, yeah, your game with C triple A. I think he's one don or two don. I forget. Two piece handicap. Yeah, nice. Yeah, in chess, if we see 2p, we think two pawns. No, I think that refers to two pieces. But anyway, he remembered something from his stream. Or from One Eye's uh, Shogi Harbor's stream. Um... Okay. I mean, yeah, finding a way to attack is. I've had difficulty doing it. Since day one, I found it like impossibly difficult. I end up making these blunders and sacrificing tons of pieces to get some way to attack. Um, oh. Yeah, trading pawns is not enough to defeat Pawn Hub. Um, even in handicap. Uh, you need to plan before trading. Uh, yeah, I'd fare better uh, planning in very, very slow games. It's just super hard, and I'm not there yet. Um, yeah. Need to sacrifice something to break through. I mean, I, yeah, I've had this experience. Uh, who was it? Yeah, I think it was Forever Go with um, uh, Time Zombie, Panic, whatever names he chooses to go by. Uh, that, yeah, I've had to sacrifice pieces before. Um, and in dubious ways, like, it just felt so, 
I don't know. Odd. Yeah. Should calculate what you'll get after the exchange. Yeah. I calculate. I'll slow down. Um, like, but you're right. I need to consider that. At some point, I just I'm like, you know, I'm just gonna let it play out the way it does, and I never improve if I keep playing that way. My rating might increase, but it's not useful. Uh, calculation's hard. So, yeah, the problem is evaluating. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, watching high-level games seems to help, but it's, like, not easy. Occasionally, like, in my game with Freeze It, I'm able to borrow ideas. Oh. Yeah, maybe um, maybe the watching the top games on 81 Dojo is not constructive. Because I'm not really getting much more than the end game out of it. Um, yeah. I suppose I do recommend, uh, similar to my chess students, uh, when I have students. Yeah. You don't want to look at the top games of everybody, but, um, yeah, it makes sense to look up a little bit above your level and watch how they're going. Um, watching the highest games is just going to leave you spellbound the entire time. Which I find amusing and exciting, but it's not constructive. Oh, interesting. That makes sense. Uh, it's easier to watch at your own pace. Uh, yeah. Whereas when you're playing, like, so much of what you're playing is just reading variations and, um, I mean, occasionally you'll spot new ideas, but um, you'll get a lot more ideas from just watching games than from playing. Yeah. Yeah, playing allows you to test your ability. Um, watching is uh, useful. But no, I guess his point is taken that like the games I'm watching I find amusing, entertaining, whatever, but um, but it's not a constructive way for me to improve at the game, it's just a way for me to enjoy it. Um, whereas if I want to improve, I should watch games a little bit above my level, not too high, but so, like, for example, take a look at other games that are going on in the same tournament, uh, the um, Teaching Ladder Tournament, or watch other streamers do their thing and hear them comment on it, and that kind of thing. It's useful. I'm so confused. I just don't know what to ask.
Ah. <laughs> uh. Joseki can be useless. It's a perspective. Obviously an informed in perspective, because he's um, been around the block once or twice. Um. Yeah, memorization doesn't get a player to high levels in chess, it, depending on what you mean by high levels. Like, yeah, you can like memorize the Latvian Gambit and make expert based on just playing some something that like nobody enjoys playing except you and you your engine and your book that you spend all day studying like you can study that sort of thing um memorize some tricky openings and get pretty far but you'll never make master that way in chess so likewise in shogi memorizing opening joseki only gets so far And at some point, you have to innovate. And you can bet that the handicap giver is going to force you to think. And it's just hard. Um, yeah. don't know what that means uh, to evaluate a game. Yeah, I'll certainly review games, as I've been doing. That should help. Uh, also, sharing my Gifu on Shogi Arbor's stream. Uh, for secondary analysis is great too. Yeah. I mean, I love his passion for the game and for teaching other players. I just am super confused by this exercise. <laughs> yeah, I don't care. You can submit it. Yeah, it's fine that I need you and I didn't do it on purpose. But yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah. Gotta win with all the handicaps while you still can. Ah. <laughs> uh. I suppose uh, I might face Maple at some point, now that I think about it. Hmm. That's quite an achievement. Like, yeah, two pieces. That's Rook and Bishop. That's, that's a lot. Finally punishing his threat. Uh, I considered uh, playing Anoguma this game, then realized in um, non handicap games, I don't play it. Or I uh, play, you know. Uh, 
So uh, I played uh, the same castle this game. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> uh, it sounds like an experience. <laughs> like, basically, you're saying, I'm gonna, like, just go tuck my king in super securely in the corner. And, like, have all of my pieces crowd around it. And then I'm going to take forever to attack. That doesn't... It's a way to play, but... Um, it's good to punish it. Force them to play, like, some other castles and learn how to do the other castles. <laughs> yeah. Uh Well done. Yeah, well done. Like the point of this is to Oh. Uh Let's see. Well, um, the beatings uh, will continue until morale improves or they pick a better castle. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it just seems like playing... Unless you play Anaguma all the time, why would you do it in a handicap game? I don't understand. Like, maybe your objective is to win the handicap game, but my objective is to play it, uh, to play a handicap game without um, a separate, um, Handicap uh, strategy. Yeah. Like playing it, if you play your handicap games differently than you play your normal games, like, is that really the best use of the game? I don't get it. I mean, in the back of your head, you have to know, like, yes, the game is different. Yeah, okay. Yeah, at least for large handicaps, you don't have to worry about it. So I guess my perspective is I would play a handicap game like a normal game. Right. I mean, going into this, I was pretty certain I was going to embarrass myself, and I did. It was worse than I thought, and that's okay. <sighs> yeah. Uh -oh. and, uh, 
I've had some games uh, like that. In fact, uh, my first this morning, or my first uh, today, I sacrificed uh, most of my pieces pursuing a single plan. Um, opponent uh, made a few blunders. Uh, as did I, but uh, having a plan is so valuable. Um, yeah. I didn't get good at chess until I started playing correspondence chess. Um, then I could uh, find time to plan. Yeah, and I'm not committing to playing correspondence shogi right now, because, like, I don't have, I don't know, like, some point uh, I should have competitive aspirations, but goodness, correspondence shogi seems like one hell of a time sink. There's just too much to read. Way, way, way too much to read. In chess, it's possible to play correspondence and not have to read everything. And Shogi, like, there's not that same liberty. There's just so many chances. You can't just rely on the opponent making one blunder and winning the game. They have to repeatedly blunder for you to win Shogi. Yeah, I used to play correspondence on chess.com. It was actually a good experience. Um, but that's not Shogi, that's just chess. And you know, like, I'm a Lee Chess developer, so for me to say something positive about another site um, means I'm actually impressed about it. Um, it means that, like, you put your move in an envelope, you write it down, you send it in the U.S. mail, and get a response back weeks later. Or you do it online, and, like, you have, like, a week to make every move. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. seems pretty obvious that I need to practice um, uh, end games a lot. I've just been distracted from that a bit, as I've mentioned before, by my aspirations with coding and working on stockfish. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Three to four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Gotta start somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Every night. Yeah. Establishing a routine is important to improve at anything. You don't just compete all day and improve that way. You actually need practice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hear you. You got to do... Um... At the moment, I'm spending more time coding a website for Sume. 
than actually solving them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. Yeah, three days response. Yeah, a lot of people play three day. I, I mean, for most people, that's probably fine. But I'll find some days or some strings of days where that's not feasible to play like however many correspondence games at three days a move. Oh, <sighs> thanks uh, for the deep uh, analysis and lesson. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah, I think we both came to the same realization that this would be a good breaking point. Cool. Nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Pawn Hub enjoyed it. Our audience enjoyed it. That's what matters here. Um, and we got a free lesson out of it. So, can't sneeze at that. Um, that was a good lesson. Not just free, but, um, yeah. So, playing through the game moves once more. Probably should not have moved my center pawn. Like, my whole idea from the outset was I'm going to play this. And then I realized, like, given this handicap, this is, like, the stupidest move I can play. So, I backed off. But, um... Yeah, pushing my center pawn led to some interesting complications. And I mean, that's fine, because like, fourth file, rook, other openings, you'll end up pushing the center file pawn anyway. But it was just such a weird thing to do in this handicap. And yeah, so there's no need to push here immediately. Like, yeah, just pushing stuff gradually, advancing all the pawns. Building the castle, like, doing all this fun stuff. Um, but then eventually, like, find somewhere to attack. And find ways to exchange pieces. And pressure the king. Pressuring Pawn Hub's king is a very tall order. But, yeah. Yep. So. Anyway, that's the gist of this. Um, oh yeah, we also saw like ideas like this, where you swing the bishop back and around. That's interesting. I mean, maybe I would have had an easier time if I just advanced the center pawn. I just felt terribly stupid trying to do that. Um, but then I got this formation I had no idea what to do with. Whereas at least when I push my pawn to 5-5, five, five, I have some attacking ideas. Here I just got super confused. So that's how that went. Um, thanks for the handicap game, and especially thanks for the lesson afterward. I know, like, I said quite a few comments that made it sound like I don't understand, and I really don't, but it'll still give me something to reflect on later. I can watch my own lesson until it really sinks in, like, what all these things mean. But also he says, like, I should not necessarily be watching the top players on the server all day. Or he said just I should watch, like, players a little closer to my level. So that, that makes sense. Um, and yeah, fixating on opening Joseki only get you so far. And that's true in chess and true in shogi. Uh, let's take a look at, well, yeah, I ended the game that way, but even here, this is getting difficult for me. At some point, like, I kept reading and reading and reading and trying to think, how can I stop him from attacking? And it's kind of the wrong mindset. I kept fixating on, like, how can I stop this from moving out? And then, like, of course, I just let it happen. Um... And quite a few times I did see, like, this is illegal. But at the end of the game, I eventually forgot about it. So, 
Yeah, I was so happy to drop this bishop. I thought, like, luring his king toward the knight would have been a positive development for me. And, like, I just need to use not some of my pieces, but all of my pieces. It's hard for me to know when to attack. Oh, and then when I brought the bishop up, he just dropped the pawn on its head, and I'm like, oh shoot, I need to do something now. And that was not great. So yeah, my big idea here, let's see if I can get him to take here. And of course he resisted it. They even considered it, like, at some point. Like, I saw him click the pawn. I don't know why. But, like, this is the whole idea. And of course he saw that. Like, so maybe it was just a misclick or something. I, or maybe I'm just imagining it. But, yeah, he just defended the point. But this defense opens up the square back here. And I knew that he wasn't going to leave this open forever, so I thought this is my best opportunity to drop the bishop. Um, but I need my other pieces supporting the attack. Yeah. So, interesting game. Let's go watch another game.